Hi everybody, Tex-Mex here. Thanks for joining me for another video. This is just a quick video. It's an update on my 62A. I did a video a while back showing the 62A. I was comparing it to my father-in-law's. He's got one as well. Uh, this one is technically older. His was just in much worse shape. This one actually still had some bluing and stuff. And uh, when I shot it, it was hitting uh, pretty far to the right. Uh, one of the issues with this 62A specifically is that it looks like whoever had it uh, ended up cutting some of the barrel off. I don't know if they wanted to make it more of a carbine and, and make it shorter, uh, but the barrel, as you can see, normally on the 62As, you'd probably have a barrel out to about here. So you're probably missing a couple of inches at least. And uh, they must have created a new dovetail for the front sight. And if you look at the chain or the bore there, the original ones had a bore that was more rounded and this one's flat and recessed. So I was hoping they did a good job and, and it was grouping fine, just kind of far to the right. So I ended up drifting the sights. I used a punch uh, and both this rear sight and front sight can be drifted. And in this case, I decided to drift the rear sight and I drifted it over a few taps using a brass punch and you can even, you probably can't see it on the on the GoPro. There's a little silver line here where this rear uh, sight used to line up and now it's uh, slightly to the left of that. So that should bring my point of impact to the left because once again it's the rule of fours, F-O-R-S. If you want to drift your point of impact, it's uh, you move the front sight in the opposite or the rear sight in the same direction you want that point of impact to go. So I moved the rear sight a little bit to the left trying to get that impact to hit to the left. I've loaded 10 rounds of a CCI standard velocity because I, I think it grouped pretty well with that last time we're gonna shoot it down there at, it's just just over 16 yards and let's see how it does so I got my target ready let me go ahead and put on my ears I'm already going deaf as it is so you want to wear hearing protection no matter what type of shooting you're doing so let's get my ears on and load in the first round Scooch over a little bit. Put my hat over here. That it? Now we got a few more in there. Okay, that's ten rounds. The rifle always seems having a little trouble ejecting the last round. I wonder if that's an issue with the extractor or the ejector. But it is an older firearm, so got to give it a little bit of slack. Anyway, it looks like it's grouping pretty well. Uh, a little high, but that's not a problem. Changing the elevation on these are very, very easy. It's just basically you've got a little, a little uh, elevator here under the rear sight that you can pull back or forward and uh, to raise or drop the sight. So I would probably uh, drop it a little bit, uh, but it looks like as far as windage goes, I have it almost over the target. You know what? I'm gonna probably tap the sights a couple of more times. You know, this is a difficult decision to make because the issue being, it, it may just be shooting this ammunition slightly to the right and there's other ammo it might hit straight up. So you know what? Let me load in some mini mags, shoot them, and if they hit in the exact same spot, then I'll go ahead and drift the sight over just a little bit more. So this time I've put in uh, 40 grain mini mags. These go a couple of hundred feet per second faster than the CCI standard velocity. So I expect on uh, elevation, they're not gonna hit in the exact same spot, but let's see how they do for windage and see whether we should adjust the rifle a little bit more. I 
I think I'm gonna leave it as is. <laughs> Obviously with elevation, the difference is this one's going faster, so it's hitting a little bit lower. But yeah, I've at this point, drifting it a little bit more, I think it's fine. It's almost right directly above the target. So let me finish off this video uh, by having some fun and shooting some steel. Well, first let me say how tickled I am that this did group very well. Obviously I was concerned that maybe uh, the crown, because for those of you that don't know too much about firearms, uh, the crown is this little last part of the bore, basically the round little spot right at the end of the barrel as the bullet comes out. And if the crown is not cut correctly, it will basically send your projectile spinning out uh, without as much stability as it should, and you're gonna get terrible, terrible accuracy with it so kudos to whoever cut this down they did a good job i figured they did when i saw that they actually recessed the crown a little bit uh, but it seems to be shooting just fine so let's go ahead and finish off by shooting some steel Oh, come on, let's get that one. There we go. That last one. Oh, oh that's it. Well, this is my own little shooting gallery. This is exactly what I have a firearm like this for. Bring friends, kids out here to shoot it, and they're going to have a whole lot of fun. So happy I was able to get it sighted in. And once again, for some reason, that last round just not popping out. If there's a gunsmith watching my video that can tell me exactly why that's happening, <laughs> I would very much appreciate it. But other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.